Okay. Okay. So, male reproductive system. Here you have the scrotum, testes, covered by the tunica albigenia. Here you have the uh, epididymis. At the base, it makes a U-turn, so this is going to be the vas deferens or the ductus deferens. Here is the spermatic cord made up of blood vessels, the cremaster muscle, lymph vessels, and so on. As this thing goes around, it goes past the... I've been saying this so often. I'm sorry. Uh, the seminal vesicles or the seminal glands. It now enters the prostate gland where it now is called the ejaculatory duct. He's a little guy here? Yep. Okay. Yeah, but it's actually coming from here and it's going all the way through. Okay. Here is the bulbo-urethral gland or calpis gland, which is really inaccurate. It should be lateral to this, not behind it, but I guess they just attempted to, uh, it, there it is. But that's the location, only lateral. Uh, the urethra is now divided into three sections. The prostatic portion, membranous portion, and this is the penile portion or the spongy portion. Why? This is called the corpus spongiosum. Up here is the corpus cavernosum. The corpus spongiosum opens up into the glands or the gland penis, which is covered by the prepus or the foreskin. This is the gland penis right here? This is the gland penis here, the, the penis. Oh, the penis okay. Shown here after circumcision. So here's the gland penis, here's the shaft. Again, corpus spongiosum with the urethra in the middle. There's the corpus cavernosum. Oh, the thing. Oh, the one more thing. That's one more thing, right? Yep. Okay, so here we have the menstrual cycle, different parts, some of the basic terminology. So here's the ovary. Here is the broad ligament. There's the ovarian ligament. Lateral to the ovarian ligament will be the suspensatory ligament coming off to that side to the body. Here you have the fimbria. Here you have the ampulla, remember it this time. Here you have the isthmus going through. There's the fundic portion, because it's superior. Here's the body. Here you have the cervix, internalized, externalized. Shown better on another model. It's the beginning of the vagina. Here you have the development of the egg. There you have the primordial cells. There's one or two layers of follicle cells surrounding it, so that's a primary follicle. Here it gets a little bit bigger with a little chamber called the antrum, not really shown well over here, and that's the secondary follicle. Here is a tertiary follicle or a graphene follicle or a gravid follicle. This thing pops open, and there is the egg coming out, and these follicle cells now convert themselves into the corpus luteum. This part of the menstrual cycle, these cells are producing estrogen. This part, they're producing progesterone. This thing shrivels up and becomes the corpora albigenia. Here you have the egg surrounded by follicle cells going through the process. And for successful fertilization, general consensus <coughs> is it has to be fertilized here. Because it takes several days, officially at least seven days, but there's one or two days here, it takes about five days to go through, and there's your seven days to fertilize here in order for it to develop enough so it works its way into the endometrium. The term they use is implantation. So on this particular diagram, here is the graphene follicle. There you have ovulation. There you have the conversion into this yellow structure called the corpus luteum, yellow body. Here it is shriveling up into the cor uh, corporate uh, uh, genia. Okay, so there you have this particular cycle.